Hello, and welcome back to the show. So this is part two in a three-part series all about chat GPT and how to use it to write great content and make more money online by using it in your brand and your business. So in the first episode, 220, we looked at how to use chat GPT specifically for writing great blog posts. In this episode, we're going to look at how to use it for creating social media posts for Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, Pinterest, Instagram, and more. And in our next episode, in part three, we'll be looking at how to use ChatGPT specifically to get you a jump start on writing books. So joining me for all three parts of this three-part series is my good friend, Melissa Sutecker of Blue Butterfly Digital. All right, let's jump in, and I hope that this is inspiring and even exciting at what it can do. All right, so we just went through episode 220. Mm -hmm. And so in that last episode, we used AI to create the epic blog post on how you make more money as a writer online. And this one, we're going to get our social media prompts, the captions, so that we can go and market it. All right, cool. So we're going to go back to chat GPT, which is chat.openai.com. Yeah, so I had to hit refresh because it uh, locked up on me. So that's why I had to go do that. And so I'm getting the topic and I'm just going to say, let's see, write a Twitter tweet. <laughs> I can tell I don't use Twitter. Promoting blog post on and then hit enter. So we're telling it to write a twi Twitter tweet promoting the blog post on making money, writing online, tips, tricks for maximizing your earnings. So it's, I want to turn your writing skills into cash, which I love. Uh, yeah. Check out our latest blog post and it goes right into it. And it does have hashtags. So you know what I should have told it because tweets really have what, maybe like an hour of a lifespan, mm -hmm. a day at the most. So let's tell it to give us 10. Ooh. So write 10 tweets and let's see what that does. And these are good. So this is going through and I'm just going to go ahead and start copying these letter and put them in the doc. That way, if you want to use them, you can. Yeah, this is so cool. Yeah, I love this because it just takes the mental load off of coming up with stuff and you can always edit it and adjust it to make it match your voice or your brand tone, but it just cuts out so mental load bearing energy. You know, what's it's funny. Annoying. You can tell it to rewrite it in a funny way, rewrite it in a professional way. Oh, yeah. let's do that. Let's do a funny one. Okay. So just to read another one as, as it's generating, want to know how to make money writing online? Look no further than our latest blog post. Learn the proven strategies for maximizing your earnings. I love it. It's almost done with number 10. So yeah, number 10 says, discover the secrets to making money writing online with our latest blog post. Learn how to monetize your content and make money as a writer. Write a funny oh, tweet. Okay. I don't know if this is oh without god. selling your soul. Oh my god, that's awesome. Want to make money writing online without selling your soul? That's great. Because let's be real. We all need more dough to buy more avocados. Hashtag avocado toast. I would use that in a heartbeat. I don't know. That's kind of that's funny. So funny. <gasps> oh, really fast. Yeah. Can we write one? Can we do the same thing, but now say write a funny treat geared at 90s kids or like kids that grew up in the 90s like I want to see if it'll pull some references uh yeah tweet geared toward 90s kids let's just you know what I'm not even gonna tell it what it's about because it knows what we've been doing oh, so let's it knows see what we're talking about yeah I don't know if it'll be able to oh this is just a random okay yeah it's just a 90s kids remember when we used to have to rewind VHS tapes before returning them to Blockbuster Yes. Definitely a 90s kids. Write a funny, let's just say tweaks. I feel redundant saying Twitter tweet. Um, write a funny <laughs> tweet geared towards 90s kids promoting and then blog promoting blog your blog post and making money. So, hey, 90s kids, remember when we used to make money writing fan fiction about our favorite TV shows? Well, now you can do it for real. You could do it for real. I just wish it would have referenced a TV show, but hey, that's something that you could just add it in. So you could be like, you know, you get, remember when we used to, um, where did it go? Oh, I, sorry. I just regenerated it. I thought it would create a new one, but it didn't. It took the oh, one that I oh. did and is going over it. So this is kind of fun and applicable. But you could just add in like fan fiction about Saved by the Bell or something, whatever, Doogie Howser. So yeah, so now this one says, 
Hey, 90s kids, remember when we used to make money by mowing lawns and babysitting? Upgrade your earning game with our latest blog post. That's cute. Cute. I'm going to put it in there. So you now have like, what, 12 different? (laughs) Yeah. I wonder if I can go back and find that other one. So anyway, so we have some tweets, which is really great because you don't want to just put one tweet out there and have it be it. It's going to die and be done. And you kind of want to, especially Twitter, like Twitter, in my opinion, is the place where ADD people like get together and yell at each other. And it's really hard to break through the noise. So you need a lot of content on there to get somewhere unless you have a huge, amazing following, which some people do. We have all of those saved and you can put it in whatever program or scheduling tool that you may use, but let's move on now. You want to do Facebook? Yeah, let's do a Facebook post. Okay. Do we have, do we want these to be like nineties kids or funny or just see what it does when we tell it to create Facebook posts? Let's just see what it does. And then we can always do a a second one and maybe we could gear it toward a different group next time, like maybe baby boomers or something just so people can see from our examples and how it can really adjust. All right. So you said create five Facebook posts for making money, writing online tips and tricks for maximizing your earnings, which is the blog title. And it is now already on number two. Yeah. And I love focusing on the baby boomer generation because I feel like you know there's all the tech bros out there that are hustling with their Lambos and being all, you know, hustle culture. There's people like us that are like, let's be a mom, be a businesswoman, be a little bit more laid back. But I have not seen a lot of people focused on baby boomers. And I would think they have a lot of skills and a lot of experience. It'd be great to see what they come up with. All right. So we have five. Are you a freelancer? Do you want to increase your income? I think that's pretty good to start with those types of questions. It is giving us hashtags, which I don't believe are really relevant on Mm. Facebook anymore, but I don't hate it. Yeah. And it kind of, they kind of seem similar to the Twitter ones, which isn't necessarily bad, but as everyone knows, you can write longer copy on Facebook as compared to Twitter. So that could be something to keep in mind is like, if it generates stuff that's still fairly short, use it as an inspiration to write an extra line or two, if you want, it's not that you have to, sometimes short stuff also works on Facebook, but okay. Yeah. So now it says typing in create five Facebook posts geared towards baby boomers for the blog title. So the first one that's coming up is, are you a baby boomer looking to make some extra cash? Check out our latest blog post of making money writing online. And then it's got also learn how to monetize your writing skills and increase your income. Hashtag baby boomers, hashtag writing online, hashtag money making. So it seems like it's just kind of taking what we have above maybe and gearing it towards baby boomers. Are you going to be using yeah. specifically for baby boomers, do you think on Facebook? Um, Not necessarily, but I feel like this could be fun to add more onto your fleet, Melissa. In the future, we could do like a very simple, basic, like Facebook ad campaign where we target baby boomers who are interested in freelance online, writing online, and just do like a couple dollars or something and run it as an ad targeting those people with the copy that calls them out directly. I feel like that could be a fun experiment too, to show people it's you smart, know, yeah. to record that right away. But because that's how something too is like a lot of times people are running ads, but if you just try to target everybody, they're going to tune it out. So using something like chat with GPT, you could literally rewrite the same post, but just targeting different segments and maybe including a reference that people would understand. So include a reference to the most popular movie that baby boomers will all know versus nineties kids versus millennials, et cetera. So I feel like this could help people to also do more variety in their posts for ads, paid ads specifically. I absolutely agree. And sometimes ads are really hard to come up with too. So I actually told it to write five witty Facebook posts because I feel like you're very witty. I feel like that would be more on brand for you than just kind of, you're welcome. So I do like this one. Want to make money from the comfort of your own home? No pants required. (laughs) Does it say that? Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Yeah. Are you tired of being broke and writing for free? I mean, let's be honest. Mm. A lot of people that are writing copy online, if you take the amount of hours that they're working mm-hmm. and factor in how much they're getting paid, that that could be a good one. Oh, making 
money writing online is like a game of Tetris. It's all about fitting the pieces together. Check out our latest blog post. I, it's so cute. Okay. So I'm going to put these in here too. And I love Tetris. I used to play that so much. I still do. It's so good. All right. So how about LinkedIn? LinkedIn's a little more okay. professional. Just watched a TikTok from Gary V. I actually should send this to you and you maybe can include it in the show notes, but Gary is talking about okay. how to really use LinkedIn in a way that nobody else is using it, especially if you're concerned that your job might be on the line for anybody that's still in corporate. Cool. So LinkedIn. I love me some Gary. <laughs> I know you do. Hey, what, what kind of tonality do we want to use for LinkedIn? Do you want it to be more professional? Do you want it to be witty? I would still say witty because I feel like arguably if everyone is trying to act more professional over there, being witty could help you stand out from the crowd. So instead of conforming, standing out. I love that. Plus, if your personality shines, people are going to love that. And I don't know, this might actually be the same stuff we got for Twitter or Facebook. I've never done this before, so we'll see what happens. Once to turn your writing skills. Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say you said create three witty LinkedIn posts for the blog topic. Just so people who are listening will know exactly what to type in. So it's kind of along the lines, but it does. Okay, so number three, want to make money writing online, but don't know where to start. Our latest blog post on making money writing online is like a blueprint for maximizing, maximizing your earnings. Learn how to monetize your content and increase your income in the digital age. I do feel like that's on brand for LinkedIn. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. It's not that witty, but no, it's good. It's not. <laughs> Maybe they're like toning that, it down for us. I guess for LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's as witty as you can be on LinkedIn. And then Instagram, right? Mm -hmm. And that definitely can utilize hashtags. All right. So I just changed it from LinkedIn to Instagram. So it says create three witty Instagram posts for our blog post title. And it's doing its thing. I honestly think the one where like, it's like, you don't need to wear pants. I would use that one on all of them personally. <laughs> That's funny. Number one, or maybe you want to turn your words into cash. I like that. I like that too. And then I might even try a variation where I like, I just take words equals dollar sign. Mm, and then, but, so it's like even shortening that down to like, you know, emojis practically could even be like one of those little like uh, uh, emojis where it's like the pencil and then put an equal sign and then put money just to catch people's eye in a different way. Oh, can you I'm do just, that? Repetition. I have no idea. Uh, emojis. <laughs> so to turn your words into a bag of money emoji question mark <laughs> I like it. for anybody that's not watching the video right now I just told um chat GPT I just said replace with some emojis I didn't put it anything else and so it's rewriting the prompts that we had above based on what Laura was just commenting and so now that's she's so got <laughs> emojis in her Instagram posts that's great isn't that fun it's really fun so who knows, who knows what we're actually going to use once it gets down to it, but it's so nice to have options and a start. It's like a jumping off point. Exactly. Now, one thing that I think would be fun is seeing what it, I, you know, TikTok's kind of new. I don't know if TikTok's new, too new for chat GPT. So let's tell it to write us a TikTok script for this. Yeah. You want to say video script or does that not matter? I don't know. So Laura, you have to pretend like you're doing this. Okay. I oh, it even you instructions. <laughs> okay. So it says, Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about how you can make money writing online. Show yourself typing on a laptop. That's the instructions. As a writer, you have a valuable skill that can be monetized in the digital age. Whether you're a blogger, a freelance writer, or even a fiction author, there are plenty of opportunities to make money writing online in parentheses, show examples of different types of writing. But where do you start? That's where our latest blog post comes in. It's packed with tips and tricks for maximizing your earnings and turning your writing skills into cash. Show the blog post on your phone or laptop. We'll show you how to monetize your content, find high paying writing jobs, and even how to self publish and earn royalties from your books. True. <laughs> show yourself holding a book. So whether you're looking to supplement your income or turn your writing into a full-time career, our latest blog post has everything you need to know. Check it out and start making money writing online today. 
show the blog post link in this on the screen with a call to action to check out your blog post. That's really good. That is so right. fun because you don't have to think about like what kind of a uh, B-roll you need or you know what I mean? I don't know. That's yeah. fun. Okay. So I'm just going to really tell it good. to make it funny and see what it comes up with while I paste this over here. For everybody that hasn't been, if you haven't heard the podcast episodes where I've been on in the past, Laura and I go way back. We have so much fun together and we like literally geek out and do this even when we're not <laughs> recording podcasts for you guys. So That's this so is true. Just, Welcome I to our wish world. we had recorded everything we've ever done. I know. I know. So fun fact for longtime listeners, we first met right before I launched this podcast in 2016. Yeah. And now we're recording this in 2023. So it's insane. It, seven years. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was living in Germany. You were living in Arizona. Now I'm in California and you're in Mexico. <laughs> It's amazing how much has changed. If you would have told me back then that I would have been living in Mexico seven years later, I would have told you you were insane. All right. So I just want to see if it actually made it funnier. I don't really see anything. Oh, oh, show some examples of different types of writing with a sarcastic expression. So I guess that's what makes it funnier. Show yourself holding a book with a satisfied expression. (laughs) show the blog post on your phone or laptop with a surprise expression. These are really fun. These are really, really important things. If you're going to be on video, you need to be more expressive. There's a lot of energy that gets lost. So personally, I'm kind of digging this. I'm just going to put post this over here. We'll see. We'll see if Laura records like a TikTok or not. Was, uh, <laughs> I could do it. I mean, it seems like the words they gave are the same, but they just added more direction in your expression as you deliver it. Yeah. It seems like. Which, you know, makes sense. And if you don't like that, you could always just tell it to regenerate it and it'll do something different for you. All right. So we did Twitter, we did Facebook, we had Instagram, we had LinkedIn, we have TikTok. So the reality is we haven't like finalized those posts. We don't have the images and stuff, but we do have the base of what we need to go create all of those things in almost no time. So it's kind of exciting. Now, have you, side note, played with the AI generators for images yet? A little bit. And I have failed miserably. I, so OpenAI has one called Dolly. It's D-A-L-L-E, I think. And I was trying to get it to create the blog post cover image for me and mm-hmm. that it really hasn't at least that tool hasn't done well have you played around with it at all I have do you want to pull it up really fast and let's just try sure. one thing um yeah I I did it because I wrote a kid's book surprise fun fact for people and you wrote several yeah but this one in particular is called duck buddies <laughs> I love that so much and the main characters are ducks and then there's also apes and it's, it's got some playful humor that adults would laugh about, but kids would miss. And then it also ties in a bit with NFTs in that world. And I really want to find an illustrator. So actually, if anyone is listening and wants to jump in, you know, please email me because I'm ideally looking for an illustrator who wants to be a partner and build out even like a whole universe of books with different characters and different worlds. I just another, a friend of mine, and I have kind of a vision for lots of stuff. So we're trying to find someone that wants to just nerd out with us. But I went to Dolly and typed in, give me an illustration of a duck based on this NFT artwork from the Sup Ducks project. And it gave me one that I thought was pretty good, but it didn't do as much as I thought it would do. But I thought for this one, for this post, we could do like, make an image of, or like, give me an image of making money writing online and let's see what it comes up with. Yeah. What it comes up with. It's so fun. And so when you use Dolly, oh, that's kind of fun. Yeah. See, so it came up with four things. The first one I definitely would not use because it looks kind of weird. Like a bunch of clip art just all mashed together. But number two isn't bad. It's like a girl writing and she's got some money underneath one hand and a pencil in the other. Then there's one with some money on a laptop. And then the last one also sort of like clip art. Looks like high schoolers at clip art or something. So I probably wouldn't use that one. But create an image of a 90s kid making money as an online writer. That'd be fun. Let's see what happens. I actually, I'm seeing online ghostwriter. 
because we might give us a ghost. We'll see what happens. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna go Speaking back which, over. <laughs> yeah, I might be starting a ghost writing like business in a box training certification program. So if anyone is interested in that, send me an email. And if I get enough people, I'll definitely run it because basically teaching what I've put together since I started being a writer myself. Do they just contact you through the website? Or just send me an email. Yeah. Laura. Oh my. Pops.com. I oh, just spoke yeah. over you. It's, it's so if I talked over her, it's Laura at copy that pops.com. But like, we're so excited we because know these, now I know, right. <laughs> I mean, that fits. This was definitely me in elementary. <laughs> I like the third oh one, God. although I don't know what it says on there. G-H-N, a mistus? I have no a idea. Mistus. But like you could take that image and get rid of the text, which doesn't make any sense, and then use that image somehow. Like I would just like copy it and move it into Canva, get rid of, yeah, download it, move that image into Canva, get rid of the words at the bottom, and then just add my own text around it in Canva canva.com yep. you can use it for free and use that and as inspiration for your post to go with your social post i'm going to add canva in here and then when you use canva make sure that you're naming or renaming your image to support your seo so it could either be like your blog post title or something along those lines to just help that out so we'll put that in there um the data of the image yeah it'll help with that Talking, speaking about SEO, let's also have some pins created, some Pinterest pins. So I'm going to ask for 10 different Pinterest pin titles and then the description. So the reason that this is really important is you want to be able today, because like Pinterest two years ago was different than Pinterest today. Pinterest two years ago was posting as much content as you possibly can, reposting other people's content. We're not doing that today. Today, we are focused on quality over quantity. And we don't want to post to Pinterest using the same keyword and or the same URL back to back. So let's say you have, you create 10 different Pinterest pins for this blog post. You don't wanna just go into Pinterest and post them all immediately. You want them to be spaced out a couple days, a piece for each one. So this is a way to just come up with some really um, easy Pinterest pin titles. So I'm going to copy all 10 of these, but I'm only going to use the first one for the sake of our example. First one is unlock the secrets to making money on writing online. Tips and tricks for maximizing your earnings. I don't know if this is something that people are searching for on Pinterest or not, because I didn't do that work, but I'm assuming that there probably are. So I'm just going to tell it to write a Pinterest pin description. And if you're following along on video, you would want to do this for each one and then just put it into your spreadsheet or wherever. So that way, when you're ready to schedule out your pins, you can do that. I feel like this is a game changer for people who make money as social media copywriters online. Because mm -hmm. you can really just quickly generate a lot of different variety for for posting for your clients on social media. A lot of marketers. And honestly, that's one of the ways that I got started making money as a writer. I, I did uh, you know my tutoring business before, but as a writer, I started working for this big marketing company and they would go out and get social media clients. And then I would, on the back end, create all their content, do all the scheduling and do all the commenting on behalf of that business in their social posts. And so they would keep part of the money and then they would pay me part of the money. And it was my job just to create content for a bunch of people. And I wish I had this tool because it would make it so much faster, at least just to generate ideas and adds a little bit of variety and just get your, your brain thinking in a new direction from what your, your go-to wording. Yeah. It helps at the end of the day for me, I don't feel drained at the end of the day after I'm using this, I feel energized because I just had so much fun and mm -hmm. I think it makes it a lot easier. I have found, oh, this is interesting. So in the past, when I ran this for pin descriptions, it's given me hashtags and now there's no hashtags, which is really cool because in Pinterest today, we're not using hashtags. I have also found that their descriptions are a little bit long. So you can always say like limit it to X number of characters and it'll rewrite it and give it to you shorter. And then another little Pinterest fun fact, there's an alt 
area that you can add uh, more text to Pinterest and you should use that area. You can either copy and paste what you wrote in the description or use all the keywords that are related to that that don't really make sense. You can kind of stick those in there too. What do you mean? Can you give an example for like this one? Yeah. Do you want me to pull up Pinterest and like kind of walk through what I'm talking about? Oh, sure. So inside of Pinterest, oh, go ahead. I just couldn't visualize it because I am i haven't been as active on Pinterest in a while. Yeah. Well, when you have me helping you out with it, then you don't have to. Yeah. So when you come into Pinterest, you click on create and you can go ahead and for you guys that are on uh, audio, I'll try to explain this as much easy as possible, but it's very drag and drop. It's very self-explanatory and really pretty and easy to use, but you would either drag and drop or click to upload your image or your video. And then you would add your title and your title. This is where you would, would want to make sure that you have your keywords in there front and center. And you can go ahead and put your description here where it says, tell everyone what your pin is about. And then down here where it was add alt text. This is where in theory, I believe like some screen readers could say it's a picture of a nineties kid with their hat on backwards, sitting at a desk writing, right? That's what that would read, but what we're using, and you could, Put that in there if those are your keywords, but you want to make sure you get as many of your keywords in here as possible and just add your destination link. What's fun about here, you can either publish immediately or like we were talking about, you could publish it at a later date. And then there's also a way if people want to, that they can, I have to go through that first. You can do a, a bunch of them at one time. You don't have to just go through and do them one by one. Nice bulk posting. Yeah, because so that alt text, that makes more sense than I see it too, because it's very similar to when you're posting a blog, like in WordPress, when you upload the main image of the blog post, there's a section where it does say alt text. And I guess I, what is that alternative text? I don't even know what the alt stands for. Yeah. Alternative. Um, I would use, yeah. Keywords just to describe the image based on what I want to be found for by SEO. Yep. But it may be in a different way, like you're saying, than the title, because you're already getting that SEO juice from the title keywords, but then use a different version of the keywords to describe your featured image mm -hmm. in the alt text section. Yeah. Or a different phrase that, you know, somebody else might use or something. It's it. I know a lot of people don't use their alt text and I think that you should, you're, you're missing out on more SEO or traffic if you don't. All right. So we've gone through and we've created... So yeah, we did Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok script, and Pinterest. So if you wanted to go through and use this, you could literally, especially if you're somebody that hasn't quite taken the leap yet, or even if you have, you should really batch your content. When Laura and I were just getting started with our podcast, that made a huge difference for me to batch it. And then you don't have to sit down and do one every single day. You can knock out your whole month's worth of content if you wanted to for social put it into a program that's going to schedule it out for you. If you decide to do that, set it, forget it, walk away and your business is working for you. And I love that. Definitely. What do you think? Is there anything here that I didn't cover or that you want to go in deeper on? I think this is, oh, I guess only thing we didn't talk about maybe is YouTube. Although I know it's not technically social media. Um, I mean, we could use this to generate titles for YouTube. It does the same thing for YouTube as it does for TikTok, where it like tells you what kind of B-roll to put in if you want to, which is really exciting. But yeah, we could do, I feel like YouTube's a little bit of an animal and there's like some SEO. Should we do that in another episode? Yeah, let's do a cliffhanger to be continued. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> reach out and let us know if you like these and we can do little versions for all kinds of stuff. Cause this is, I feel like just watching it it jogs my brain for so many ways I can use it that I didn't think of before. So I really appreciate your jumping on with us, Melissa. Yeah, it's so fun. So you guys should definitely email Laura if there's anything specific that you want us to do and we'll go do it. Put it out there for you. They could also go to womeninbusiness.com <laughs> if they want to talk with us more because we're starting very just early stages starting a free Facebook group community to support other women, non-binary people in business, in your journeys, whether you're aspiring to start a business or you're further along and you just want to talk about brainstorm ideas with people who are in the trenches as well. So yeah, head over to womeninbusiness.com and it'll redirect you over to the Facebook group as of right now. In the future, 
will have its own website and everything, which you could also find the link to Facebook from the website once that's built out. But you and I both, Melissa and I both are always juggling 15,000 projects. So no huge rush. It's just a little spot to get an excuse to talk to each other more and help other women going through a similar journey. We are multi-passionate entrepreneurs here to support other entre- other multi-passionate or not all multi-passionate entrepreneurs. It's a fun way for us to hopefully build this amazing group of like-minded people and, and grow our friend group. And, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day about our concept, and she was saying that one of the things that a lot of people are looking for right now is a way to advertise their online services. So maybe there's a way for us down the road to incorporate that that into the group too, and just provide more support for everyone all the way around. Yeah. Like make a big business directory and say like, if you offer these kinds of services, give us a little bio and photo and links to your site. So if people are coming into the group and looking for that, we can kind of like all cross pollinate in the ecosystem. Yeah. I like that idea. So come back to the show notes if you want any of the re- links to the resources or the earlier or later podcast slash blog post videos that we're creating for this little series that we're doing. You can find Laura at copythatpops.com, of course. And if you have any questions for me, you can find me at bluebutterflydigital.com. I would love to interact with you and hear any thoughts that you might have. Amazing. Yeah. And if you go to copythatpops.com forward slash 221, it'll take you to the show notes for this episode, 220 for the last episode and 222 infinity for future episodes. I always name it exactly that way. And yeah, we'll sign off for now. And are we going to do another episode on books and such, or are we going to leave it here for now? You tell me. Do you have more time? I have until about, I have another hour and then I'm doing yoga by the beach. I'm doing sunset (laughs) yoga by the beach. (laughs) Because we are batching out our content as we're creating this. To be continued in our next episode, we will cover using AI to help you write books. See you next time. Bye. (laughs) Isn't it amazing what chat GPT can do? A big thanks to Melissa Sutaka for sitting down with me and playing around with this tool so we can see all the applications that are possible. And what we discussed today is really just the tip of the iceberg. But I hope it inspired you to start playing with it and seeing how you can use it to write more content to help build your brand and business specifically with social media. In the third episode of this series, we're going to look at using it to write books. So I'll see you in episode 222. And remember, if you want link outs to anything that we mentioned in this episode, go to copythatpops.com forward slash 221, where you'll find the show notes for this episode. Thanks again for listening and keep on finding ways to write copy that pops.